Today I share the story of a very unique Kentucky Wildcat. Y'all ready? Cotton Nash, a UK basketball star and hero of the early 1960s, has died. Nash was 80 years old. Hey folks, today I get to share an interesting story with you, but I do apologize. Um, you gotta look at me a lot in this video. Uh, number one, the individual doesn't have a tombstone just yet, doesn't have a headstone, uh, but we are gonna go see that. Uh, but they're down the road from uh, where we're visiting is actually a burial happening, and I'm definitely not gonna interrupt that. Gotta respect that. We'll give them a, an hour or so to get out of here, and. And maybe we can uh, we can get over there and, and just take a photo or so and get out of there. So I'm here today to talk about Charles Francis Cotton Nash. Um, he was born on July the 24th, 1942, and he left us on May the 23rd, 2023. He was born in Jersey City, New Jersey, um, but around 11, the family moved to Jeffersonville, Indiana, which is just across the river here in, in Kentucky, from Kentucky, from Louisville. Um, Eventually, the family made their way to Orange, Texas. Uh, his dad's job moved him down there. Uh, they wound up settling in Lake Charles, Louisiana, uh, which is about a 30 minute drive from Orange, Texas. Uh, and the reason being they chose there was the uh, transfer rules were much more lenient uh, in, the, in the high school there at Lake Charles. Um, so that's where they landed and Cotton Nash attended there and several coaches, several universities came calling including one at the University of Kentucky. The school that most heavily recruited me was UCLA. John Wooden and his staff. In fact, those were the days when you could just about do anything in recruiting. And I, he, they flew me out there two or three times. They let me take a buddy. Uh, gorgeous place, gorgeous campus, and uh, called me on the phone every night. And I, I had uh, offers from Big Ten schools, ACC schools, and. Uh, uh, Florida schools, but uh, I finally I got to the point where if I was going to play basketball in college I wanted to stay in the southeast and in the SEC and if you were a basketball player at that time You really should go to UK <laughs> So that's how I ended up here During his stay at UK he was named to the all SEC team three separate times now there probably would have been a fourth but in those days freshmen were not allowed to play on the varsity basketball team. So that kind of knocked him out of that. It also affected him when he became a three-time All-American. Uh, possibly could have been a fourth. Uh, he was two, two times a C. Yeah, he was an All-American for three seasons. The first two seasons, he was named to the second team, while his senior year, he was a consensus first-team All-American. So that's pretty awesome. During his time at UK, um, Cotton Nash averaged 22.7 points per game, 12.3 rebounds per game, and 1.8 assists per game. Um, at that time, he ended his career, which was three years, as the all-time leading scorer at the University of Kentucky. Today, there's been eight others past him, so he's number nine on the list these days, uh, but his career total was 1,770 total points in three seasons. It's pretty doggone good. Nash is also number five on the all-time uh, career rebounding list with 962. Um, two separate times, he gathered 30 rebounds in a single game. And uh, that is a big part, in my opinion, of why number 44 hangs in the rafters at Rupp Arena for Mr. Cotton Nash. After his time at UK, um, Nash was drafted 12th. With the, so the first pick in the second round of the NBA draft, and he was picked by the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, his pro career definitely didn't mirror his college career. Um, as 
an NBA player, Cotton averaged just 5.6 points per game with 4.9 rebounds per game and 0.8 assists per game. Thankfully for Cotton, though, basketball wasn't his only sport. See, at UK, Cotton actually played baseball as well. And that led him to actually being drafted by one of my favorite teams, the Los Angeles Angels. Now, the Angels didn't get him to the majors. He was traded with some cash to the Chicago White Sox for Bill Moose Scourin, who was a big bopper at the time. And uh, it was there, September 1st, 1967, that Cotton Nash made his Major League Baseball debut at the Chicago White Sox. Now, I wish I could say, wow, what a, an amazing career that Cotton actually had in the Major League Baseball. But unfortunately, that didn't really pan out for him very well either. Um, over the years, he only got 16 total at bats. He did get three hits. Unfortunately, they were all singles, which led him to a very dismal 188 batting average. You ain't going to get much playing time like that. Another interesting fact for you, uh, Cotton did play for the University of Kentucky, but after his uh, NBA career and MLB career, he spent some time with two Louisville teams. The first would be in the ABA, and that was the Kentucky Colonels, who uh, had some good success, but the a NBA consolidated and the ABA was no more, so a lot of the teams just kind of dissipated, and Louisville was unfortunately one of those. Now, minor league baseball, which is still in Louisville, in the International League back then was the Louisville Colonels. And Cotton, Cotton had the opportunity to play for both of those teams. So while he wasn't born in Kentucky, while he was a high schooler in Lake Charles, Louisiana, before that in Jeffersonville, Indiana, it's hard to not call Cotton Nash a Kentucky. And especially since after his playing career, he... Uh, he got into selling racehorses, and, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident to say that if you're a former Kentucky Wildcat and you're selling racehorses, you're going to make some money. <laughs> so while Cotton may not be the, uh, the biggest name you've ever heard of, um, he, he's a very important piece of Kentucky basketball history. The fact that uh, he was able to play his three years at the University of Kentucky for Coach Rupp, um, that was probably, and probably still would be, one of the greatest accomplishments you could ever hope for as, a, as an athlete. I mean, at the time, it didn't get any bigger than Adolph Rupp, right? I mean, as you can probably see there in the distance, um, the workers here at the cemetery are doing their job as the families have left. So I won't be long. I don't want to be rude. But here we find the graves of cotton ashes mother, father, and sister. Here you have Frank Nash, 1914 to 1986. His mother, Nail, 1913 to 1979. And here you have his sister, Francine Marie Nash. She was born here March 12th, 1946. She left us November 25th, 2018. Now Cotton himself is right here at the foot of his father and mother's headstone. He doesn't have his headstone yet. There is the marker. So I'm assuming it's something very custom and probably beautiful. So maybe in the future we can get back here when he does have a stone and, and take a look at that. So that's gonna do it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed, learned a little bit about Cotton Nash and how he was the uh, former all-time leading scorer in University of Kentucky basketball history. I thought that was a pretty neat fact. And uh, it's also a great representation of how the game has changed, as well as the players that have come after. I would imagine the first person to break his record would have been Dan Issel, who was uh, at UK somewhere around those times. I don't know if they overlapped or not. Uh, but then you had Jack Givens and the Goose, and you had Kenny Skywalker, you had Sam Bowie, you had Rex Chapman, you've had Jody Meeks, you've had Tayshawn Prince. Uh, Jamal Mashburn. I mean, you've had some amazing, amazing talent come through the Kentucky. And hopefully, with Coach Pope, we'll get some of those fellows to stick around, be proud of the jersey that they play in, and not just come here as a stepping stone to go to the NBA and make their millions. <laughs>